Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully, you all are having a wonderful day today. So anyway, I thought that I would review this little video because I found it very, very interesting. And I thought that the responses that the fans and the comment sections overall, I thought that they were very interesting as well. But this ESPN First Take segment, segment excuse me, they're going to be talking about overall, <laughs> uh, in their terms, over what an elite QB is or overall, uh, well, I really shouldn't say that. They're going to be talking about overall about the Baltimore Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson. And the question that has to be asked, is he an elite QB? Now, the thing is about Lamar Jackson is that he has brought a very good newfound respect for the Baltimore Ravens. He has brought them newfound, you know, success. But at the same time, he's 1-3 in the playoffs. <laughs> and his statistics during the playoffs have not necessarily looked that great. So, it is what it is. Anyways, Stephen A. Smith and Keyshawn Johnson. Keyshawn Johnson, who was a former wide receiver, I believe, in the National Football League. They're going to be talking about Lamar Jackson. They're going to be saying overall who they believe are elite quarterbacks. And is Lamar Jackson in that category? And I'm going to talk about it as well. I'm going to give you my opinion as well. Let's get into it. My <clears throat> number one criteria is, are you an accurate thrower of the football? particularly under pressure. I'm not talking about scrambling out of the pocket when you ain't got nothing in front of you and you zipping a pass here or there. And I'm not trying to say he can't throw from the pocket and he hasn't made good throws from the pocket. What I'm saying is Lamar Jackson has yet to prove that he is an elite passer. And if you are not an elite passer, you are not an elite quarterback. Period. Let me play devil's advocate. Has he had the right help around him, the right weapons to catch passes? No, he has say. not. Stephen, yeah. he is not happy. What I'm going to say is this, and a certain amount of people may not agree with me because I, I looked in the comment section and they were really going after Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> and I seen a certain amount of comments overall saying, oh, Max Kellerman should have been on this segment because Max Kellerman overall, he knows what he's talking about when it comes to football, yada, 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 yada. Well, let's be real. And a certain amount of people may not like me for saying this. There's a certain demographic <laughs> or a certain type of people overall that like Max Kellerman on these segments because Max Kellerman has a reputation for being super duper liberal when it comes down to it and especially sticking up for some of these black quarterbacks overall no matter by what means <laughs> you know quarterbacks like Cam Newton quarterbacks like Colin Kaepernick well I guess Colin Kaepernick he's mixed but you get my point and you know other quarterbacks like that Lamar Jackson and I have no problem with sticking up for them or defending them if I think overall that they deserve it. Here's my point overall with all those quarterbacks. Uh, <laughs> when you talk about Cam Newton at this point in time in his career, what Max Kellerman will tell you, and in my opinion, this is really what makes Ke Max Kellerman almost an idiot on this conversation. Max Kellerman will tell you overall that Cam Newton uh, overall and uh, Colin Kaepernick, that they should still be playing in the National Football League today because once upon a time, they led a team to a Super Bowl. Well, so did Joe Flacco. Does that mean that Joe Flacco should be a starting quarterback today? <laughs> you know, you get my point? It is what it is. Just because someone had great success once upon a time does not mean that they're going to continue giving you that, you know, overall throughout this new generation or throughout this time. And if I'm just talking about Cam Newton overall, you know, and uh, for those of you that don't know me, my favorite team is the Carolina Panthers. So I really loved watching Cam Newton play. I thought he was a very exciting quarterback. But, <clears throat> excuse me, but it actually took me a very, very long time to become more logical and objective uh, overall. I'm in my early 20s now. But when it was when I was in my teenage years watching Cam Newton, I would always say that, you know, well, he didn't have enough help around him. The offense overall is just not on the same grade as some of the other guys out there. And although that was true when it came down to it, the truth is about Cam Newton is that even at his best, he's not going to get you a Super Bowl ring. And a certain amount of people, <laughs> they may not agree with that. I understand that he led that team, uh, you know, uh, pretty well to the Super Bowl into in the 2015-2016 season. So maybe Cam Newton, had he had enough help around him consistently, overall, maybe he could have got one. And to be quite honest with you, that's kind of the same tier that I see Lamar Jackson in. He kind, he kind of, to me, at least is very Cam Newton-esque. I think overall that obviously he's a very valuable quarterback, but does that mean that you're necessarily elite? No, it doesn't. Jimmy Butler, you know, in the NBA, he's someone overall that is very valuable no matter what team he goes to. He was actually able to lead the Miami Heat to the NBA Finals 
uh, the season overall before the Bucks and the Phoenix Suns overall, you know, were able to, uh, you know, face off in the finals. No one expected that. But I would not put Jimmy Butler in my top five NBA players <laughs> in, in this current generation. I just personally would not. I think Jimmy is a very, very good player, but I would not call him an elite player. But, of course, that depends on your definition of an elite player. And, you know, I have to agree a little bit with Stephen A. Smith here. Lamar Jackson, in certain terms, yes, he does have a little bit of a problem with throwing the football. And I've seen, you know, some comments overall saying, oh, well, his winning percentage overall is great and all this other stuff. You know, he's breaking all these records. Well, tell me, has this translated to the playoffs? Because so far from what I see in the playoffs, that one MVP season where the Baltimore Ravens were really predicted to be unbeatable by the time he led them to that 13-3 and record, they got completely thrashed by the Tennessee Titans. Now, to be fair to Lamar Jackson, he was able to face his demons and beat the Tennessee Titans, I believe, overall in the first round of last season when it came down to it. He was able to beat them, so I congratulate Lamar Jackson on that. But then he also lost a very close matchup to the Buffalo Bills, all right? And some people are going to say, oh, what are you talking about? The Buffalo Bills, Baltimore Ravens, they weren't an even matchup. Josh Allen had so much talent around him. I don't remember exactly what offensive talent Josh Allen had around him last season. What I'm going to say is this. Lamar Jackson, I understand maybe in terms of offense, at least last season, he maybe did not have the greatest amount of help. And I do like some of the moves that the Baltimore Ravens made around him in order, you know, to make things easier for him. And do I think overall that could eventually lead to a championship? It could. But in my opinion, Lamar Jackson, he's not a person overall that is going to constantly put you in Super Bowl type of conditions. That's not the type of quarterback he is. The quarterbacks overall that can do that or the ones that are going to be Super Bowl contenders. They're going to be the Aaron Rodgers of the group. They're going to be the Tom Brady they're going to be overall the Patrick Mahomes and maybe the Russell Wilson if you want to put him there. And Josh Allen, in my opinion, he's already superseded Lamar Jackson. He can make throws that Lamar Jackson cannot cannot throw. He can make certain moves that Lamar Jackson cannot do. Now, of course, Lamar Jackson, he's very physically gifted. He's a very great athlete. He can run really fast overall, and he can be somewhat of a dual threat QB. And what I'll give him credit for is this. I think overall that he has improved on his passing majorly than what he was in his first season because that dude could not pass for shit <laughs> his first season. I thought overall he was going to be another Colin Kaepernick, but he ended up overall proving me a little bit wrong. He certainly has led this team to success, and I think overall he certainly is a big part of the reason why this team has been so successful. Let's also keep this in mind. The Baltimore Ravens have had one of the top defenses within the past I don't know how many years. Last season, if you go to profootballreference.com, I believe, they were ranked the second best defense in the NFL right behind the LA Rams. All right? So it is what it is. So Lamar Jackson, he has a little bit more help than what people like to say. But it is what it is. The right situation. <clears throat> On top of not having a situation, it's right for the Baltimore Ravens. Damn what you think he should be. It's right for the Ravens, and here's how the and here's why it's right for the Ravens, because they getting ready to turn in the bag. And when a team turns in the bag, that tells you what they feel about you, regardless to what mainstream media and fan bases think. Okay. Well, I would respond. I have a retort to that argument that Keyshawn Johnson just made. See, he lost the argument again. Damn what we think. Uh, na, 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 na. Doesn't quite work that way, my brother. Doesn't quite work that way, okay? Because let me tell you something right now. Keyshawn Johnson, you understand what I'm saying? That Keyshawn Johnson radio show in the morning with four hours. That's why all of those guests are flocking there. You know why? Because they care what the hell Keyshawn thinks. That's why. And let me tell you something right now. When you're sitting up there as a football team, I... I don't really know... Keyshawn Johnson that much as a person. I really don't know over what he says a lot on national live TV, so I guess I can't say too much about him. But <laughs> with what I've seen him usually say, at least in the times that I've watched him, Keyshawn Johnson does not appear to be the sharpest tool in the shed. Thought, correct me if I'm wrong, Keyshawn, Mr. Super Bowl champion. I thought it was about the chips. I thought it was about winning. Excuse it me. Is a oh, please. People act like Keyshawn Johnson sometimes on these shows overall. They act like overall this dude was an elite caliber wide receiver. He was okay. <laughs> In fact, actually, much more things were expected out of him than what he actually delivered. But it is what it is. About the chip. And he's going to get there. It's, it, the dude, this is going on his fourth year, Stephen A. 
It's four uh, years in, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Actually, uh, it's only four years in. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's only four years in? Take a look at what Russell Wilson was able to do four years in. Take a look at what Patrick Mahomes was able to do four years in. Now, of course, these are very, very high standards, but this is this is kind of my point. You know, this is going to be your fourth year, and your playoff record is one and three. This is why I compare him to Cam Newton. He actually is very, 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 very similar to Cam Newton. Another very gifted QB overall who does have problems throwing the football, especially down deep when it comes down to it. Now, one thing I'll give Lamar Jackson credit for over Cam Newton is this. He seems to be a little bit smarter with the football than what Cam Newton was because Cam Newton, he just turned over the ball way too many <laughs> way too many damn times. Lamar Jackson, he at least keeps the turnover ratio. He keeps that down pretty low. So I'll give him credit for that. And his passer rating overall has gotten better. But you can tell overall Lamar Jackson, when he especially has to throw deep under pressure, he has a problem with that. Keyshawn Johnson, I didn't <clears throat> say he would never be elite. I did not say that his career is... Uh, I, I'm going to say it. Uh, Lamar Jackson is never going to be elite. And a lot of people overall, they're going to heavily disagree. Just because you bring your team some sort of success, that does not necessarily mean that you're elite. It depends on what you mean by elite. When I think of elite quarterbacks, I think about four, maybe five quarterbacks. Maybe five quarterbacks, but really about four. Those are your quarterbacks overall that are going to bring you to the Super Bowl or overall, at least going to win one in their career. Those are the Russell Wilsons. Those are the Aaron Rodgers. Those are the Tom Brady's. Those are the Patrick Mahomes. Lamar Jackson, once again, he's a Cam Newton-esque type of QB. He may bring you to a Super Bowl. He may even win one in his career. He's not going to consistently do that. I just don't see that happening. He, he is not the Peyton Manning of this era. He's not the Tom Brady of this era. He's not, you know, even the Drew Brees of this era. He's not any of those guys. He's not the Aaron Rodgers of this era. He's not any of those guys. He is the Cam Newton of this era. That's what he is. A very good QB, a very valuable QB, but is he elite? No, because I would have never put Cam Newton in the elite tier. Over. I did not give any kind of indication that there is no, a period you, you to you that have sentence. Given All I'm talking about is right he's now. not a throwing quarterback. He's you not did a throwing give quarterback. that indication. All right, let, let me ask you this, Stephen. Well, Keyshawn Johnson, let's be honest. Is Lamar Jackson, is he really great when he has to make certain throws under pressure, especially long and deep? You know? Even this mid-range sometimes is not all that great. Take a look at his statistics in the playoffs last season, guys. He was 0-2 in his touchdown and interception ratio, meaning that he had zero passing touchdowns and two interceptions. So far, Lamar Jackson, for what he has had, we can actually argue that he's underwhelmed in his career. And that one season overall, where he won that MVP, you had a very, very, very good running back or fullback, I believe, in Mark Ingram, where he had over 1,000 rushing yards that year. It really helped you out when it came down to you had a great running game. I understand in terms of receivers and all that other stuff, maybe you haven't really had the best talent there. But like I said, <laughs> there's just certain quarterbacks that are like that. But I can just tell when I take a look at Lamar Jackson, that dude's not going to lead you to a Super Bowl win. He's going to he's gonna make you very, very successful. What I would compare him to, let's say if I were comparing it to NBA, he's kind of like the Damian Lillard. You know, He's going to lead you to the first or the second round. And then he's usually going to get exited out. <laughs> very, very athletically gifted. But in terms of intelligence about the game and also in terms of his abilities, he is somewhat limited. He's the Damian Lillard, in my opinion, of the NFL. Once again, very Cam Newton-esque. Now, in my opinion, Damian Lillard, he'd probably be better for his job overall than what Lamar Jackson or what Cam Newton would be. But the reason why I compare him to that overall is because they're always going to bring you similar success rates. <laughs> at least Lamar Jackson one thing I'll give Lamar Jackson credit for over Cam Newton is this uh he did not have the complete roller coaster seasons yet like Cam Newton has had because one thing about Cam Newton is that if the momentum was not rolling and if he lost one game sometimes he'd lose the next seven that's that's one thing I'd give Lamar Jackson credit for over Cam Newton so that's that's two areas that he's a little bit different from Cam Newton but they're still very similar yeah. What if he had Tom Brady's weapons? What would you expect from him well, this take, season? If well, he if those those. Well, right, but all that is shoulda, coulda, woulda. When it comes down to it, I mean, shit. What if? What if overall Deshaun Watson had those type of weapons? You know, what if Matthew Stafford had those type of weapons? We can say this about any quarterback in the league. After a while, you have to take a look at the results. And once again, it's not like Lamar Jackson has had absolutely nothing. 
once upon a time, you had a very, very great running game. I do also believe that a part of the reason why the running game was so good is because Lamar Jackson is a dual threat QB. But on top of that, overall, this dude has a very decent offensive line from the looks of it. It's not like he's a Cam Newton or a Russell Wilson when Cam was on the Carolina Panthers a few years ago or Russell Wilson now where they're still one of the worst offensive lines in the league. <laughs> but when it comes down to it overall, you know, Lamar Jackson, he has a good O-line. I would say overall, does he have a lot of help in the receiver ends? No, I wouldn't say that. But when it comes down to it, they're somewhat talented enough to where you could have at least made the AFC championship game last year overall if you were good enough. Because the Buffalo Bills team, a lot of people are going to say that they were so much more talented than the Baltimore Ravens. They were not. They had the 16th ranked defense overall in the league overall in their offense. Perhaps it was a little bit more talented than the Baltimore Ravens, but not by a whole lot. At least that's what I remember. If I'm wrong about the offense, then someone correct me. But I don't remember anyone looking at the Buffalo Bills last year and saying, wow, they just have a dynamite offense, <laughs> at least compared to like the Chiefs and some of these other guys. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But we'll see what happens. Type of receivers. I would expect the numbers to be greater. Okay. He would certainly throw for 3,000 yards. He only threw for 2,700 yards last year. Had 26 touchdowns. What was it? Nine interceptions, something along those lines. This is what yeah. I'm saying about Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson, during the regular season, you escape the pocket, you make things happen, you fling that football. Yeah. When the playoffs arrive and everybody ups the ante, which Keyshawn knows a hell of a lot better than me, the bottom line is this. Things intensify, and what they do is focus on you doing yes. what you do worse. And in the yes. end, the kind of things that are available to you in the regular season ain't necessarily available to you in the postseason, and as a result, yes. we find out who he is. I think that Lamar Jackson is a, is a great, phenomenal talent who's a good quarterback, but when we say elite quarterback... Elite with the quarterback position cannot be attached to one another until you can throw that football accurately under duress, period. I, I would say that I somewhat agree with Stephen A. Smith here, and some people may disagree, but I have to agree with him. And it's not even that, but you also have to bring a decent success rate in the playoffs. You're one in three, <laughs> all right? That's why I compare him a little bit to Cam Newton, because Cam Newton's playoff record overall is somewhat similar. And he even had less on offense at times to work with, sometimes when Lamar Jackson had. Now, of course, at certain times, he also would have more to work with because he had an excellent tight end in Greg Olson. And overall, there was a couple of other weapons that he would have here and there. And, of course, he had Christian McCaffrey once upon a time that one season. So what I'll say is this. Cam Newton, certainly at one point in time, you can argue, had a little bit more than what Lamar Jackson had. There was also certain times where he had less. You know, when he led that team to the Super Bowl, I can't think of really one elite offensive player besides Cam Newton and Greg Olson. One other one. Of course, they had Jonathan Stewart, but John Jonathan Stewart is not really an elite running back. He He's a decent running back. He's not really an elite running back. But it is what it is. Yeah, and, and, that's gonna, and that is going to happen, Stephen A. and Molly. They went out and retooled their offense. Yeah. Too bad Dobbins got hurt. They just signed Le'Veon Bell to try to maybe fix that problem. But okay. they drafted Rashawn Bateman. They have Boykins there. They went and signed Sammy Watkins. Sammy Watkins. Now, all of a sudden, Hollywood Brown. Sammy just got Sammy. Sammy got to stay healthy. That's all he got to do. Right, right, he just right. got to stay healthy. And I'm hearing a lot of ifs. And I'm not sure what Le'Veon Bell did last season. I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if Le'Veon Bell overall, if he's the same running back or not. I, I can't really remember. I haven't looked up his statistics lately. I hope that he can bring something to that team. I think that would help him out. But... We'll see what happens. You know, it, it'll be it'll be very, very interesting. Like I said, this is just my opinion. I don't think Lamar Jackson is an elite QB. I don't personally think he is. And they also are putting him on. And here's the big question. Even if you get help on a team, the matchups even that I'm concerned about, if you were to lose to the Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes, that's not necessarily a team overall that, you know, I, I'm going to completely strike down Lamar Jackson for losing to. The matchups overall that you're going to have to worry about in the playoffs are most likely overall the Tennessee Titans, but he seems like overall he was able to face his demons and get past them. But the major two matchups overall that you're going to be <laughs> judged for for getting past them or not getting past them is probably these two teams next season. Either A, the Buffalo Bills, or B, the Cleveland Browns. Now, the Cleveland Browns, you never know overall what they're going to do, but they seem extremely talented. Baker Mayfield, I don't necessarily think is an elite quarterback, but he's good enough overall to lead them somewhere, especially with all that talent around him, you're going to have to try to win some of those matchups because those are winnable matchups. And if you're supposedly an elite QB, 
You have to win those matchups. Underneath the center when predominantly he's been in the gun. So they are putting an emphasis on making the passing game okay. better. I am not a Baltimore Ravens fan. I'm just giving you facts. That's all, all right. I'm whoa, giving whoa, 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 whoa. you. They went That's out there true. and they, they went that, out there and got two receiver coaches that most people that know football and know okay. that position will okay. say Keith Williams and T. Martin know what the hell they doing. Whoa, 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 whoa. He, you know. Many people overall, this kind of reminds me of the Jameis Winston situation that happened, uh, you know, a couple seasons ago. And, you know, since my team is the Carolina Panthers, I know how all the quarterbacks operate down there. Jameis Winston would never impress me that much because he's just too damn stupid with the football. He doesn't know what, <laughs> he doesn't know how to not turn it over. I mean, how the hell are you going to throw 30 damn interceptions in one goddamn season? I mean, goddamn. <laughs> but this reminded me of that overall. And, and guess who also stuck up for Jameis Winston? Max Kellerman. Shocker. But, you know, it is what it is. But when it comes down to this reminded me overall of certain people overall saying, well, Jameis Winston's going to be successful because, you know, Bruce Arians is there. Now, Bruce Arians is a very, very great hire. But that's no guarantee overall that your quarterback is going to do so much better just because they hire certain people, you know? Because take a look at <laughs> take a look at Jameis Winston overall with Bruce Arians. And Jameis Winston is decently talented. Now, in my opinion, Lamar Jackson is more talented than Jameis Winston. So I'll give him, you know, uh, credit for that. I do think overall that Lamar Jackson is going to end up greater than what Jameis Winston obviously was. Because Jameis Winston, in my opinion, was pretty much a bust. But it is what it is. But when it comes down to the overall, we'll see what Lamar Jackson does. But what I'm saying is this. Keyshawn Johnson, he's going on a lot of ifs right now. And I think overall that those are great hires. I think that those are great things to do. But that's no guarantee that that's just going to win you a Super Bowl. We'll see what happens. Receiver spot. Well, Keyshawn Johnson, with all due respect, you didn't give me facts. Because you said this is what he's going to do. It's not a fact. It's your perception of what this... I agree. Going to happen. No, now, it's I a fact the of what, on, on, fact on, on, of what they me. just did. Work with me. Hold on. It's factual how? they retooled. No, no. Sammy Watkins, just, Hollywood. Just because you retool does not mean that that team is going to be a Super Bowl contender. All right. It is what it is. Take a look at the Carolina Panthers a few years ago. They were kind of under the radar for possibly being Super Bowl contenders once again. They had Christian McCaffrey. They had Cam Newton. And they had North Turner on there, who's allegedly this offensive genius. And they had another roller coaster season. Brown, all of those boys. John Even though Cam Newton's passing percentage was up. But... A lot of these passing percentages, you know, are up. A lot of these completion percentages are up, especially these days, because a lot of a lot of these teams overall they throw so many screens and overall, you know, a lot of that stuff. So it is what it is. And then Mark Andrews to a new contract extension. I get all of that. You, you've upgraded your personnel. We now know oh, God. that that's going to work. upgrade because you assume it's going to be better. We don't know a lot of things about a lot of players right. until it actually happens. But this right. is all based on what we see with our eyes. I our agree. eyes tell us. My eyes tell me, as you like to say, as an NFL all-pro train guy, I look at it with my eyes and I say, oh, they're going to be okay in the passing game. They <laughs> Keyshawn Johnson has to boost his own ego because no one else is gonna. <laughs> gonna be all okay. right. Okay. Gonna and be I'm okay. saying to you, and and he'll be okay. And I'm saying to you, you in the AFC North, you got Cleveland and Pittsburgh waiting for you. I don't know about that. Yeah, we'll see about that. Pittsburgh, I'm not really overly too worried about because they're pretty much done. Uh, Mike Tomlin, I'm not sure how much more success he's really going to bring them. Ben Roethlisberger is not going to lead a team to a Super Bowl at this point. If he was able to lead a team to a Super Bowl, it would have happened several years ago. You had Antonio Brown. You had Juju Smith-Schuster. You had Martavius Bryant or whatever the hell that one dude's name was. You had an excellent offensive line. You had a very good defense. If that team was not going to win a Super Bowl with that roster, they were not going to win a Super Bowl, period. They're not going to win a Super Bowl now. I don't think that they can beat the Baltimore Ravens in a playoff game. That's my opinion. I think Lamar Jackson is not necessarily the Pittsburgh Steelers overall that you have to necessarily worry about. The matchups overall that you have to worry about are the Buffalo Bills, the Kansas City Chiefs, maybe the Tennessee Titans, and also the Cleveland Browns. Those are the matchups you're going to have to worry about because those are the teams overall that are going to be competitive with you. So we'll see what happens. You got New England, Miami, and Buffalo in the East. I don't know about that. You got Indy, all right, in the... People keep mentioning New England. I keep hearing a lot about this newer quarterback, Mac Jones. I really don't know anything about him. 
Uh, maybe if Bill Belichick liked him, maybe he's seen something in him overall that he really, really liked. And we know Bill Belichick overall, he is a pretty good coach. You know, he is a genius sometimes with picking out certain players. So we'll see what happens. Not with Tennessee, I don't know about that. You got KC. Okay, your eyes give you pause. I don't know about that. That's all I'm all saying. All right. Stephen A's eyes give him pause. Be before we wrap this up, though, let me ask you this, Stephen A. You so lost outside of Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers, who do you consider elite? In terms of quarterbacks right Tom now. Brady. There's only four quarterbacks that for sure can be elite right now because they've won Super Bowls. They've their championship pedigree. One, of course, has to be Tom Brady. Number two, right now, it either has to be Aaron Rodgers or Patrick Mahomes. Then after that, it would be Russell Wilson. And if you're talking about anyone uh, after that, I wouldn't necessarily call them elite, but I would have Josh Allen at number five. And overall, when it comes down to it, uh, at number six, uh, if you're talking about different results or something else like that. I don't know. You can put a couple of quarterbacks there. If you're talking about just talent, I probably would put Deshaun Watson there. You know, Ky Kyler Murray overall also would be up there as well. But Lamar Jackson, you can have anywhere from like six to probably eight. He's somewhere within that range. He's somewhere within that range. But he's not a top five quarterback in the league right now. And Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers, Brady, Aaron Rodgers Russell Wilson, oh. Patrick Wait, 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 Mahomes. hold on, hold on, Keila. I'm Pat, asking Stephen A. because I want to know who's Patrick on his Mahomes, list. Patrick yep. Mahomes, Russell Wilson. Okay. Uh, uh, let me really think about that here. Uh, because they're very, when we talk about greatness. Elite, elite. It's very elite, it's very. It really shouldn't take that much time. <laughs> like I said, there's four quarterbacks overall that are 100% for sure elite. It's Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, and Tom Brady. Those are the only ones that you can for sure call elite. Those are the only ones that bring you somewhat of consistent results, you know, or that have also won a Super Bowl. You know, Josh Allen, I think, is on his way. Deshaun Watson, maybe one day if he gets some help around him, uh, you know, even though he hasn't had as bad a help around him, you know, in the previous season, but it is what it is. You know, maybe a couple of other quarterbacks that I'm forgetting right now. Okay. I give it to like four of those four or five dudes. All right, fair enough. Key, you're adding anyone to that list? See, I, I like Derek Carr, but that's just me. Oh my that's God. Me. You said that I like Derek Did Carr. You... Keyshawn is a damn idiot. <laughs> Derek Carr, you mean that quarterback overall that had a one and done season? Don't get me wrong, Derek Carr is not a bad quarterback, but he ain't the lead man. Come on, man. Come on. Derek Carr, like, come on. Say that on I, national TV? Yes, I did. And, and some people might try to put Matthew Stafford up there. No, hell no. I can't put Matthew Stafford up there. He has shown me absolutely no results. And I'm not I'm not still completely convinced that he's going to lead the, the, the Rams to a great postseason success either. I would not be surprised at all if they got uh, first rounded, second rounded. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't even make the playoffs because Matthew Stafford, he is not good under pressure. He is not good under pressure. I've been saying it, and I've been saying it since day one. Three years ago, he was an MVP candidate until he yes, got he hurt. Was. John Gruden came in there four and changed ago. up everything. Four, well, four years ago. Yeah. John Gruden came in there, changed up everything, and he ain't missed a beat. They're not losing because of him. They're losing because of the damn oh. defense. Oh, we oh, might, we no, might no, no, need no, to whoa, continue whoa, 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 this whoa, 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 whoa. later. I, I understand that. I actually like Derek Carr. He's no scrub. I'm not trying to imply that. But I, I just want to be clear. When I yeah, said I, elite, and I want to be clear. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. stay with me, Keisha. You ain't going nowhere. Hold on. When you say elite, and we brought up Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson, Tom Brady, uh, uh, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers, you're saying on that. That's right, Stephen A. Smith. Don't forget your boo. <laughs> Stephen A. Smith loves Aaron Rodgers almost as much as Shannon Sharp loves LeBron James. To television I, that Derek I, Carr belongs in that conversation. I. I like Derek Carr for that. I don't care what people think. I okay. like him. Despite not playing, the best. Re do you know who the best receiver he's ever had? Ever. Do you even know? No. Amari Cooper. Not the tight end Waller. Amari Cooper has been his best receiver. Okay. He, he hasn't been with right. Amari Cooper, what, in three years? Thanks for watching. Yes. Anyways, that's really about it. <laughs> Just thought that I would review that video. Anyways, we'll see what Lamar Jackson does this season. But I have to agree a little bit with Stephen A. Smith. In my opinion, he's not elite. And a lot of people, of course, are going to disagree with that. But it is what it is. Once again, you take a look at his playoff statistics. They're not overly that impressive. It is what it is. Anyways, that's really about it for me today. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you all later.